Okay. okay. Welcome, everyone. This is the uh, July 18th meeting of the Yellow Springs Village Council. I'll wait for Judith to sit. And Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Wintrow? Here. Housh? Here. Sims? Here. McQueen? Yes. Hempfling? Here. Also present are um, <coughs> Chief of Police Dave Hale, Village Manager Patty Bates, Assistant Village Manager Melissa Van Zandt. We are expecting the solicitor Chris Connard at any moment. So we're starting <laughs> off the meeting with something um, different, uh, something new that we decided to do at the last meeting, and that is to swear in uh, new commission and uh, committee members. So tonight we have um, the Justice System Task Force and um, some members of the uh, Human Relations Commission. So first I would like Jennifer Berman, Bessine Blunt, Patricia Dewees, Kate Hamilton, John Hempfling, Ellis Jacobs, and Steve McQueen. Just come up, do you think if I just stand here? Yeah. And just stand in front and you know, do it. I don't know, you don't have to raise your hand. Do they have a copy of it? You. Okay. I wouldn't want them to have to remember this. I know I can't. What about Al? Is, uh, is he an alternate? It's on a separate. It's different. Okay, y'all ready? I solemnly affirm, swear or affirm, whichever. You want us to say it? Should we be together? Yes, okay. if that's, that's fine. So yeah. I will support the Constitution and will obey the laws of the United States and of the state of Ohio, that I will in all respects observe the provisions of the charter and ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs and will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Justice System Task Force. Thank you all. Thank you all for agreeing to serve. This is going to be, um, I think, a very important group, and you have a lot, of, a lot of hard work to do, and we appreciate you agreeing to serve the community. Could, could I'd like people to introduce okay. themselves, so, and for the camera, too, so that people in the community <laughs> can know who they are. I'm Pat Jennifer Vernon. Justine Blunt. Kate Hamilton. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Now we have um, Al Schluter and uh, Dave Turner. I'm not sure Dave is here. Okay, you can read it. <laughs> okay, I solemnly uh, affirm that I will support the Constitution and will obey the laws of the United States and of the state of Ohio, that I will, in all respects, observe the provisions of the charter and ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs and will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Justice System Task Force. Thank you, Al, and would you introduce I'm Al Schlater. <laughs> Schlater, excuse me, and I, I always, and the reason Al was um, sworn in separately <clears throat> is that he is actually an alternate. He and Dave Turner are alternates to the task force. Thank you. Uh, next we have, okay, that's that one. Next we have um, Scott Olsterholm and Lindsey Burke. I solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution and will obey the laws of the United States and the state of Ohio, that I will, in all respects, observe the provisions of the charter and ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, and will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of the Human Relations Committee. Thank you, and would you introduce? Scott Ostrom. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. <laughs> and finally, we have Jessica Thomas. Is Jessica here? Oh, great, come on up. I can just give her mine. I mean, I just, mm -hmm. 
just replace human relations. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution and will obey the laws of the United States and of the state of Ohio, that I will in all respects observe the provisions of the charter and ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs and will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Human Relations Commission. Thank you so much, Jessica. This is Jessica Thomas. And just to clarify, Jessica is a full member, a new member of HRC, and Scott and uh, Lindsey Burke will be alternates. Thank you all for serving and um, for agreeing to help out and, and uh, serve your community. So I think that's, is that it? Great. Thank you. That's, I like that. That's a good way to start a process. And for the people who aren't here tonight. Right. So we do it the second uh, meeting of every month. Okay. So anyone that can't make one month can come the next. Uh, very good. Um, and now, oh, excuse me. And just, I know that you're pretty burning with desire for all of the items on the agenda, but you are welcome to depart if you don't wish to stay. <laughs> 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 Thank you all. Uh, next, we have announcements. I'm sure Brian has some. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So first of all, I wanted to mention uh, we do not have a meeting uh, on August 1st. So this is something we started a couple years ago so that Judy can take a vacation. <laughs> oh, <wait>. I <laughs> don't think that's the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and she is and well deserved. Um, I also wanted to mention that we did finalize the date for the John Eastman dedication for the uh, water reclamation uh, plant. And that is going to be on Wednesday, August 10th at 11 a.m. Um, at the facility. Uh, I also, in case you didn't get a chance to go last weekend, the Yellow Springs Theater um, group is uh, having uh, Much Ado About Nothing uh, up at Antioch College. That's on Friday and Saturday at 8. And I also wanted to mention our uh, fresh produce and baked goods food truck that comes the fourth Tuesday of every month. So that will be coming next Tuesday, the 26th. And they get here around noon, is that? Um, they, yes, they set up about 12.30, and then they actually start handing things out about 1. OK. Great. Just to, I just wanted to mention the Yellow Springs Theater Company doing the Shakespeare. It's just exciting that they're bringing that back to Antioch. It's actually in the main, in the front yard of the main building. So um, it's my understanding that's where it was originally. So it is, uh, it's very exciting, and I hear it's quite Excellent. And Judith, you look. Speak, uh, well, I was. I was. <laughs> uh, do people know what happened at Antioch College? Oh, oh. that's true. Yes. <laughs> so. um, Antioch College received their accreditation. I think it was announced on Tuesday. <laughs> and it was. Um, I shouldn't have needed a reminder of that, but my. I, I can't remember things all the time. So, okay. no, it's excellent news. A lot of people worked incredibly hard on it, um, and it was a, it's a great day for the community and a great success for Antioch College. Yeah. Marianne? Um, today, uh, Judith and I had a meeting with Patty Bates, in part to start thinking about the Justice Task Force, but also um, I've been concerned about what's happening nationally, uh, both uh, black men in particular have been being killed by police and also the two killings that have happened, one in Texas, one in Baton Rouge, I think, of, of police. And um, while we're fortunate that that is not happening in Yellow Springs, we are, we're not isolated from that. And I just felt like we need to acknowledge that I think the nation is in crisis. And um, so during our discussion, uh, something that Patty mentioned was that um, sometimes there have been police officers that have gone out of their way to greet citizens, and they have been rebuffed. And um, you know, I think that if Yellow Springs is going to be successful in having uh, a um, relationship between uh, our police department, which 
uh, is supposed to be safeguarding us and the citizens, that that uh, extension of courtesy has to go both ways. And there's all kinds of violence that we experience, big violence and little violence. And not acknowledging the humanity in someone else, I think, is a type of violence. So I just want to, to encourage everyone and to have everyone speak to your friends and family, whatever, that we really need to be reaching out to each other. The, uh, de the, the vigil on Sunday, I think, was a good example of that. And I just would hope that we can maintain that and encourage that kind of spirit. Thank you, Marianne. Any other announcements? Um, I just wanted to check with Jerry. Is Planning Commission not meeting August 8th? Did I mishear that? That we needed to wait for Denise's final OK. okay. And I, so at, when tomorrow arrives, if Denise says there is no meeting, then there is no meeting. And I will, oh, okay. I will put that out on the, on the uh, website. Okay, um, next item on the agenda is uh, the consent agenda. It uh, includes the minutes of July 5th, 2016 regular meeting and the financials for June, thanks to Melissa Van Zandt. Um, can I get a motion, please? So move. Oh, okay. I can. Well, I guess I can. I wasn't here. You weren't here. I don't think you can. No, can. So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Abstain. Abstain. I, I, the financials was not in the electronic packet that I got, and it wasn't it in the. Is I didn't see it anyway. I looked twice, but oh. so I'm abstaining. There. So we got Sims and McQueen. Mm -hmm. You can affirm if you want. Affirm. You guys don't have to. Well, you don't have to adopt it. You can, but you've got enough to pass it, so it doesn't. It's no big thing. Either way. So we're. The, the motion can read that rather than adopt to affirm the minutes. Okay. As an accurate right. reflection of the action of council taken at that meeting, even if you weren't there. Okay. And I, I do. I did approve the minutes. I mean, I, I read the minutes. I approved the minutes. So it looks like the financials, financials aren't in there. Mm. Not seeing them. Financials are online. They're online. Online. This is the packet. That oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Where? So we had we had two we had two abstentions. So it was three to two, I guess. Okay. Uh, Next is a review of the agenda. Um, is there anything that we want to add, remove, or change around? I'd like to put something in new business um, to just uh, say a couple sentences about something that I'd like council to put in its future agenda, which is regarding the utility roundup uh, poss okay. possible program. Okay. Anything else? Can we move under old business community development funding before funding of commissions? Sure. Because that the discussions may cross over. Okay. I wondered, Karen, I'm sorry I didn't call you ahead. Could have called you ahead, I guess, to discuss it with you. But the ordinance 2016-14, I feel like we need more discussion on it. Uh, we keep tabling it. Is this, this is the this one is, about changing? Yes, changing the, our policy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, that's, I, that's what I've been feeling is that we need to discuss it. And we keep tabling it, then we don't discuss it or do it. <laughs> you know, so we, I mean, two, we can two meetings in a row. to discuss it. We have to untable it, right, Chris? Well, I or I was thinking maybe we should uh, put it to I don't know old business and actually just have a discussion. That was my. How suggestion. can we do? What can we do? You could put a motion forward now before addressing. Yeah, that's what I would suggest. So we'll, do you have a motion? Have a motion to oh. move to another Okay. Agenda. Yeah, so I'd like to make a motion that we move that ordinance 2016-14 uh, from a legislation public hearing to the old business. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. And anything else? 
Okay. Um, Brian, would you review the uh, um, petitions and communications, please? Uh, yes. Okay. So we, uh, we had several um, communications from NVRPC, our local municipal planning organization, including about their mapping tool, their recreational asset map, um, as well as some board minutes and the annual report. I think we got a physical copy of that as well. Uh, also, there were minutes from the Greene County Regional Planning Commission meeting. Um, Karen, do you want to talk about the other letters? Um, well, the OEEF letter, I think that was needed on Friday, which I didn't realize, so we can just, um, I was just going to ask for a signature on that or for approval for a signature, but I talked to Susan Jennings and she said she had to send off the grant request on Friday. And she said that she had a lot of a lot of letters of support, so she didn't feel um, concerned that we didn't have that. Um, the other one, um, something that Patty got through um, mayors and managers, mm -hmm. and I know it has very little to do with us, but it seems like something just to throw our name into the into the hat, just to support um, the NCAA Division uh, One uh, men's basketball. Um, semifinals at the first four in Dayton apparently for the first time in a while there's going to be some competition in uh, for locating it and it really is an important uh, economic engine for the region so um, I would like to be able to send that looks good okay. uh, and then we have the uh, mayor's monthly report business as usual and we did have one communication from citizens uh, Kurt Miyazaki and G.G. Davis, uh, owner and manager of the Emporium, in support of municipal fiber, and they outlined a few specifics about how it could help their business. Great. Thank you. Uh, now we're moving on to public hearings and legislation. We have the second reading in public hearing of Ordinance 2016-13. Do we need to have a motion to untable it first or just you, you, they, it was tabled. Okay. Well, why don't you read it, read it, and then we'll mm -hmm. take a vote to untable it. Okay. Uh, title only? Yes. This is uh, Ordinance 2016-13, approving the amended sanitary sewer connection agreement with Morris Bean and Company, and authorizing the village manager to enter into the amended sanitary sewer connection agreement. Okay. As we said, this is tabled. It was tabled at the last meeting for further discussion. Um, can I get a motion to untable? I move. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Um, I will, I see that we have um, the folks from Morris Bean here. I think I will turn to Patty Bates first. We had um, some excellent information. I think a, a nice compilation of um, everything that we had, had seen. There was some concern expressed at the last meeting from citizens that um, it, it appeared that we hadn't been doing our due diligence, but I think that this shows that yes, we have been, um, and and we asked staff to compile um, a more complete packet all in one location. So um, Patty did that very quite well. So Patty, I'll turn it turn it to you. Well, as you can see, um, back in April of 2015 was um, when. Uh, Joe Bates, Jason Hamby, and myself actually went out to Morsby and met with Mr. Magro and Mr. Kleinschnitz about um, not only the sanitary sewer, but also the, the sinkholes uh, in the discharge channel and, and potential remedies for that. And um, while it's logistically impossible to get the process water um, that goes through the discharge channel into the sanitary sewer, um, Morse Bean has, uh, in fact, acted upon some of our suggestions in, in, uh, in a manner and has lined, they have lined the discharge channel so that the sinkholes hopefully will not be a concern now in the future. Um, but as far as the existing sanitary uh, lagoon that they have and the, the package plant that they're operating, um, there's been, there have been ongoing discussions uh, with the village that reach back to 1992 on this, and I did reference a couple of resolutions in my report um, that were passed that granted the sewer tap and for various reasons fell through. Um, I think Mr. McCready is um, ready and able to talk about that particular timeline in depth a little bit more if you would like inf more information on it. In addition to that, I did answer the questions that were asked at the last meeting on the various topics about the Zyglo, um, 
how many gallons it would be, what effect that would have on our plant, um, all those types of things. So, um, would you just briefly just describe the project, how the, the, the sewer line is being brought to where, um, from where to where? Essentially, it's going to run from the Morris Bean plant straight across their property uh, under Hyde Road and over to an existing, well, we hope, an existing manhole on Spillin Road. Um, if we can't locate that existing manhole because it's in the middle of the farm's field, um, then we may just have to, they may have to establish a new manhole. But it will tie into the existing sanitary on Spillin Road. Um, I believe it's an eight, eight inch, yeah, an eight inch uh, force main. Um, so it will require a lift station with a grinder pump to get it out there. Um, that's essentially it. It's a pretty straightforward project. And the, um, the usage will, um, it's looking like around 600 or 25 gallons, how much? 3,100 gallons mm -hmm. per day for the plant. And that will um, really not have a significant increase. It's that only adds about 1% 1 1%. increase in flow yeah. to our current capacity. Right. We treat about 300,000 gallons a day right now, so that's minimal. Um, Chris, did you have anything to add, or should we hear from um, the folks from Morris Bean? Why don't we hear from them, and then I'll, I'll comment about okay. the proposed changes. Yes. I'm Steve McCready, representing Morris Bean. Um, this is our fourth meeting here today. Um, and at the first meeting, I went through the timeline. So you just have to tell me whether you want me to go through it again. I, uh, but we're good. primarily here to answer your questions. We tabled um, to work through one issue um, about the language in Section 1A of the agreement. I'll let Mr. Connard address that if you're interested. And Mr. Magro has been um, out of the country for some period of time. He is back now and is here today to answer any questions you have. Okay. So I, we don't have a formal presentation tonight, but we're here to answer any questions you have about the legislation. Okay, thank you. Chris, why don't we hear about that sure. language change, and then we'll see if council has questions. Um, the, uh, on Friday, uh, Mr. McCready and I had a conversation. It was part of an ongoing discussion we had to attempt to address some of the concerns that, that council had and I think some of the members of the, uh, the some of the citizens raised. So let me kind of go back to the last meeting. Um, when the changes were presented at the last council meeting, there were at least two things we were attempting to accomplish. The first was to make sure that it was clear that this only involved one tap in. In other words, if a new entity came in that did not otherwise trigger annexation, they would not get any additional taps, that it's limited to the sanitary or the, to the pro process, sanitary uh, process wastewater, if I'm saying that correctly, does not include any process wastewater, but only the sanitary wastewater. And that we clarified what the, how the liability piece would work. In other words, that um, if there were issues with the EPA, Morris Bean would have the financial responsibility to address those and indemnify or hold harmless the villages uh, for that. So uh, at the last meeting, uh, what I heard was there were some current concerns about what would go in to uh, the land that would trigger annexation. Um, if you go to Section 1A, we removed the reference to uh, Moore's Bean Company. Uh, and the reason we did that is because it ended up being misleading when you trigger back to the reference uh, paragraph on uh, 6B, or probably 6C, which indicates what triggers annexation. Now, before I get into that, I want to uh, explain one thing. Uh, in 2010, the agreement that was entered into had no uh, annexation trigger. In other words, it was simply provide the tap, and that was, th that was that. And it was not clear within that agreement whether or not it would be a single tap in. Uh, so what we attempted to do in this agreement was one, make clear single tap, and, um, and I think that Mr. Magro can explain this a little bit when he gets up, but the, at that time, uh, and six years ago uh, to date, 
that there is now an annexation trigger there. So we've, we've engaged in additional negotiations that creates that, that opportunity because it's not, while well, the village may have a right to do it, um, it's an option that the village does not have to exercise. So I call it a right of first refusal, as it were. Um, so the quid pro quo, quo of this discussion has been uh, creating, because the village didn't want to just give away the extraterritorial services um, in light of the dynamics that are out there that were going on back and starting in 2008 with the Great Recession when <coughs> villages and cities were losing resources that they historically had gotten through estate tax and through um, uh, money being returned to uh, local communities from the state. So with that in mind, uh, 1A and 6B were drafted, or probably 6C, and so the change that we made, because there was a concern that was articulated at the last meeting uh, regarding the potential for a, a big box of Walmart or something that, that may not be something desirable in the community, that a parenthetical was added, and that was in the, the, uh, the email, and it may be out front that Judy put it out there, that it would say, after commercial, excluding any newly constructed retail structure in excess of 1,000 square feet. And that was intended to address the concerns about what type of development may occur there. Um, I also went ahead and looked at township zoning. Um, I, and I forgot my, my paperwork on this, but there is a portion uh, that would, I guess, lay, lay to the north that is zoned residential R1B, I believe. Um, and then there's another portion that's zoned uh, industrial. And, um, and of course, Township zoning could change, uh, but anyway, I wanted to address that. So what we have now is uh, a proposal that, would, that has been uh, submitted or asked for your consideration that would include this limitation on what commercial would be. The triggers for annexation would be to residential use or any development other than those listed in 1A. So that means that the property, property could be sold to some successor interest, and if they stayed within the parameters of what's defined in 1A, they could continue to uh, one, use that sewer tap, and no right of annexation would be triggered, but again, limited to the one tap. So I know that was a little confusing, and I apologize for that. Um, so I'll stop there and see if there's any questions. Yeah, Chris, uh, yeah. my client's listening to you closer than I am. Okay. For that, I apologize. He thought you said the exception was Oh, it's 100,000. I'm sorry, 100,000. If I said 1,000, I apologize. Yes, 100,000. <laughs> I wrote down 100,000. And that's to exclude the Walmarts and the other big box type of I have two questions. The first, I'm not sure who would answer, maybe Patty. Um, first, I appreciate whomever made this sheet that sort of shows where the Morris Bean usage falls within uh, other commercial. Uh, establishments in the village, sort of in the middle. Mm -hmm. More than Tom's Market, but less than Antioch Wellness Center. The, my question is, with that one tap, um, how much usage would there need to be to go over one tap? Because it's not just the size of the building, it's, uh, I presume, how many people it, are. It's a, it's a use. Yeah, it, it's it. They they are not going to exceed an eight inch. I'm Morris not Bean. concerned about Morris Bean. I'm concerned about what other entities might come in afterwards. You know, could they have 400 employees, for example, and still use? Not not on an eight inch main. I don't. That that would be a lot for an eight inch main to to carry. Um, so what what sort of triggers that decision? Well, if they, if they are exceeding the flow, they're going to have backups. Uh -huh. And if they have backups, then they're going to come and, and say, we'd like, like another yeah. tap, and yeah. we're going to say that you have to annex. So. Okay. The other question I have, I guess, would be for Mr. Magro. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I, I uh, support um, this proposal of um, <coughs> um, the extending sewer system, Morris Bean. I appreciate the company being here. Um, I also support if some other company took it over and did the same thing, but I, I have uh, 
I'm less accepting, I guess, of if Morris Bean just, I guess, went out of existence and then the property were sold to really it could be anything other than residential, I guess. So I'm wondering if you can just address that. Why is that important to you all? Um, he's a, go ahead. Why don't you? I mean, that, that's probably a question others have also. So let's. Yeah. First of all, I want to apologize for not being available at the prior council meetings, but uh, I was on a trip with my grandson that we've had in the works for over a year. Oh, nice. So it was <laughs> it was great, but it was uh, really difficult to put off. Um, I, I guess the. Uh, the issue really is, well, first of all, the uh, force main, I think, is three inches rather than eight. Uh, so there's much. Well, I looked in the plans that from the last time, but. Um. It's, it's an eight inch or threat for water line coming out of the facility's eight inch, but it goes into the exits, the grinder pump is a three inch. OK. Oh. Oh, yeah. we'll, have to look at, we'll have to look at those plans again because I looked at it further down the road than that. But. So first of all, the uh, capacity of the line is limited. So if it's, it's not we're, like we're going to put, I don't know, 10,000 people right. if it's on a, it. If it's a three inch, that's much less capacity. And um, secondly, it's only for sanitary. So uh, regardless of the nature of the operation that might succeed in the speeding company, we're still dealing exclusively with uh, sanitary waste. Well, of course, the village would, uh, other things being equal, like to annex in order to, to have tax revenue, mm -hmm. as well as have a stronger relationship. Right. Um, and so it's not usu so usual that we do this without annexation. So my question is, what, what is the benefit I mean, if, if, any, if Morris Bean goes out of business, you're no longer going to be there. So why is it important for you all to have the ability for uh, any, comp any, any business, basically? Property value is, is essentially the reason. Anything that might make the property less marketable would affect the uh, property value. Okay. Which is, and again, we you know work very hard with uh, the village management to try to come to an agreement that was acceptable to all parties, and uh, you know the changes we've made since the last agreement, uh, I think you know show our willingness and interest in cooperating to uh, come more your way. Well, I think we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Other questions, comments of either Mr. Magro or um, one of the other gentlemen? I have some comments, in, in, <laughs> but I don't I, but No questions. Have discussion? No. Okay. Oh. Anybody else? No, no questions. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of, or do you, are we just ready? Does anybody else have any questions? Are we ready to make comments? Maybe we'll ask for questions from citizens yeah, if we're ready. Questions from citizens? Actually, it, this is, I could open the public hearing. This is the yeah. second meeting, so I'll open the public hearing. Yeah, I'm, I'm Rick Donahoe. Um, it was brought up whether or not they're going to be here. Does anybody know about the financial state of Morris Green? Is that public knowledge? Um, are you going to be here? Rick, direct Rick, your are they comments. Are going to be here? Do you know if they're going to be here? Um, I, I know that their workforce I, has gone from 200 to 100. That really isn't part of this discussion. No. Um, because this is about protecting, is my view, it's about protecting the well field, but um, I, I don't know that you're going to get an answer to that question. Okay. If, there, if, if Mr. Magro uh, is willing to answer it, we can, we can ask him yeah, to come back up. That's a tough up. question. I think I think Marianne brought it up saying if you're not here. So I was just wondering, are you going to be here? Thanks, Rick. Anyone else? 
Seeing and hearing none, I will close the public hearing. Um, Judith? Um, well, I've kind of struggled with this. I Common sense says to me that we don't want uh, a uh, mound, um, basically a sewer system above our, well, our wellhead. It just, common sense says to me that that's not the best idea. Uh, even though it would be new and under the oversight of the EPA, um, over time, things can happen. So, although I've had concerns uh, mostly about uh, setting precedents, I, I think my concerns about that have been, uh, I, f I feel like I'm not as concerned about that now. And common sense says, the stuff that could contaminate our wellhead being, you know, put into a pipe that is taken away from the area is the best idea. So at this point, I intend to vote for it, for this agreement. Thank you. Marianne, any other comments? Jerry? Uh, no comments. Brian? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just want to say I appreciate uh, Morris Bean being part of the community. And um, I guess I also share uh, the same priority with Judith and, and I think others about protecting the wellhead. Um, and I guess I just want to bring back the, the first meeting that you um, attended. It was stated that there was no intention to change the use of the property. And uh, I hope that that is still the intention not to do that. Um, and so, uh, you know, so I also uh, don't feel as concerned, and, and I appreciate you working with us on this. Thanks, Brian. Um, I, too, appreciate it. I, I've, Judith and I have both been involved from almost the beginning on this, so um, it's, uh, it's come a long way. Um, and, and also, clearly, the protecting our well field has to be one of our highest priorities. Um, there have been assertions made that this is never done, and that's just not true. A lot of communities um, offer services without annexation for any number of reasons, um, and I have a whole list of them in Greene County that have done it. Um, and I think certainly protecting a well field is a good reason. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not as concerned about, you know, potential changes of usage at that location, I don't think that is a logical retail site or, or big box site or even an office site. So that, that doesn't concern me of what might happen down, down the road. Um, I do think that the fact that there are some annexation triggers are, uh, are positive and I think that we also now have a seat at the table. Um, no matter what happens when the sale of a property and I think that that's always a positive thing for us So um, that's all I have to say. Are we ready to oh, take I, I just would add one other thing that uh, Patty included in her summary because it's been a concern for <coughs> citizens that first of all that Morris Bean is paying for um, all of the work to be done to extend the sewer to our system and their charge for the uh, uh, sewage, the monthly charge, what will it be? About 1,400. Uh, in per, it's 200%. Per, so, so they're paying double what they would pay if they were within the village. Correct. So I think that there are some citizens who have been concerned that this is going to cost us money. Right. And that no. is not the case. Okay, um, Judy, would you please call the roll? So, our, so do we want to? Can somebody make a motion to accept the changed language? So uh, moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Um, Judy. Yes. Hempling. Yes. Housh. Yes. Sims. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Wintra. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you. So we have moved the next ordinance into old business. Um, uh, reading of ordinance 2016-15. Um, let's, is that's, that's pretty short, isn't it? It is pretty. Yeah, go ahead and read it because it's kind of unusual. 
Sure. This is authorizing the village manager to enter into a declaration of utility easement for the solar array to be constructed on the glass farm and declaring an emergency. Whereas the construction of a solar array to provide clean electrical energy to the village of Yellow Springs requires a declaration of utility easement on a portion of the glass farm, and whereas the village charter and the Ohio Revised Code allow for the placing of utility easements on properties for the purpose of the generation of energy, and whereas the village has determined that it would be in the best interest of the village to declare such a utility easement, and whereas in order to provide clean electrical energy to the residents of the village, it is necessary to declare a utility easement in a timely fashion to facilitate the commencement of the construction schedule within this year's building season. Now therefore, Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby ordains that. Section 1, the village hereby declares a utility easement for the construction and maintenance of a solar array on the glass farm. Section 2, a copy of the easement is attached here to as Exhibit A and incorporated into this ordinance by reference. Section 3, the village manager is authorized to execute and record the easement. Section 4, this ordinance is hereby declared to be an emergency measure necessary to expedite a project to preserve the public interest and that will benefit the public health and welfare through the provision of clean energy. This ordinance shall take effect immediately upon passage. Thank you. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Patty, I guess that uh, that ordinance actually just kind of explained it, but if you could just yes. take a, say a few more words and... Sure. There are two ways that... Um, the, uh, essentially, the glass farm is zoned residential, and there are two ways that you can put a solar array in a an area that's zoned residential. One is to declare it a, a government facility, which it is. Um, the other is to grant utility easement. Um, we have utility easements throughout the village. Um, the, uh, normally they're on private property where a private property owner gives us permission to run through their property, uh, through their backyard with a, an electric line or a water or sewer line. Uh, in this case, we're granting the easement to ourselves, and Planning Commission had those two options, to either to call it a facility or um, to, to grant the easement to ourselves. They chose to make the granting of the easement a condition of the approval of the permit to construct the solar array. The good part about it being an easement is that we can clearly define the area um, that the array will take up. And this is the maximum area. Um, I do want you to understand that this is slightly longer um, along the north-south sides than it will actually be because we're going to move it as far possible south. Um, we just have to be cognizant of that tree line that's there um, so that it doesn't shade the array and decrease the production. But um, this is the maximum area that this this array can cover. So they can't go outside it. And that, that gives us a clearly delineated area uh, for the array. <coughs> okay, any questions? So, so I just wanted to reiterate that the, the problem was that identified a planning commission <coughs> when um, Matt realized, you know, we had uh, made that the whole glass farm residence B, and we wouldn't be able to put the, the <coughs> array there after all the work that everybody's done to, to, to uh, make this happen. So this was the way that uh, was discovered. And and it's it, this doesn't have anything to do with individual home solar. This no, is no. because it's a large. It's basically a, a utility installation. Right. in and of itself. Right. The, um, the, a residential solar for uh, an individual put uh, a solar at his or her, her home is, um, is perfectly acceptable in any residential zone in the village as long as it complies with the solar ordinance. Okay. Uh, this is an emergency reading. Are we doing one reading or two readings of this? One? We're, I mean, it's an we're emergency. We're doing one, and the reason that we're doing one is because um, we are far enough into the to the year now. We still have to negotiate the power purchase agreement, so there's still negotiation to be done after this. And they won't start the construction of the array until we reach the power purchase agreement. And so we want to get this in before the end of the year because we don't want to lose the entire... Other than that, we're going to have to be buying off the grid until we get this thing online. And that could end up costing us money in, in that way, but also costing us increased construction costs if they happen to go up next year. Okay. 
So uh, as an emergency reading, this is the public hearing. I will open the public hearing for this. Seeing and hearing no comments, I'll bring it back to council table. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Judy? Yes, Humphrey. Yes. McQueen? Yes. Sims? Yes. Housh? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. Uh, next is resolution 2016-36. And let's read this in, in full. Sure. This is authorizing the village manager to forgive Yellow Springs Home Inc. for water and sewer tap fees and for zoning permit fees for up to six units proposed for the Forest Village Homes Affordable Housing Project. Whereas Yellow Springs Home Inc. provides sustainable, affordable housing opportunities within the village of Yellow Springs, and whereas Home Inc. has proposed an accessible, energy efficient apartment housing project to be lo located on one to two lots on Dayton Yellow Springs Road in Yellow Springs. And whereas the village has, for previous Home Inc. projects, agreed to waive utility tap fees in order to demonstrate the village's support of affordable housing. And whereas Home Inc. has now made a request that Village Council evidence support in the form of tap fee and zoning permit fee forgiveness. Now, therefore, Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby resolves that. Section 1, Village Council hereby asserts its belief that affordable housing is in the public interest and agrees to contribute up to six water and sewer taps to the Forest Village project. Section 2, Village Government contribution will take the form of fee forgiveness at an estimated dollar amount of no greater than $2,625 in tap fees and no greater than $100 in zoning permit fees. Thank you. Can I get a motion, please? So move. Second. Uh, I see that we have two Home Inc. representatives. Who is going to choose to speak? Emily. <laughs> you can hear from both of us if you want to. Uh, well, I submit, I'm Emily Seibel. I'm the executive director of Yellow Springs Home Inc. And um, I did submit a letter, but I'm happy to summarize it. Um, Please do. That would Just be helpful. Citizens. Sure. So. Um, we are requesting village support for the Forest Village Homes affordable and accessible rental project by waiving all or part of the water and sewer and zoning permit fees for up to six units. We're not seeking any kind of formal project support or final approval. Rather, this is a request early on for tap fee waivers to assist in bringing resources into our community to make the project possible. Um, reasons to support this are that it will provide uh, leverage for a grant request through the Federal Home Loan Bank of Cincinnati for, 200, uh, for up to $249,999. And a local government fee waiver is um, part of the competitive scoring criteria, um, so it would make our grant application more competitive. And then it will also show support as we seek um, up to $420,000 in additional grant funding through the Ohio Housing Finance Agency and foundations. Um, the project would provide for up to $850,000 in local infill development, um, which would also be improved infrastructure uh, on currently vacant and residentially zoned uh, infill development lots. And we also anticipate that the units would bring up to $8,000 per year in property tax revenue. Um, and then it meets the village values, uh, some of the village values as well, especially uh, value number three, to be a welcoming community of opportunity for people of diverse races, ages, sexual orientations, cultures, and incomes. It's also highly energy efficient, will add to the tax base. Um, and then also, uh, of course, affordable housing um, is mentioned as a priority in the, in the visioning uh, comprehensive land use plan and there's precedence for it. So if you have any questions about our request or about the project, um, I'll put it over to you. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. Yeah. Um, any comments or questions from council? Uh, just that the uh, description of the project that was on the table last meeting was a pleasant surprise. I think it's mm -hmm. very exciting and yay. Yeah. Good work. Yeah. <laughs> Patty, any comment from staff? We always work with Home Inc. Um, if they have a, a question or a need, Emily Emily is very good with communicating uh, with us about it. And so um, I think that um, that Judy met with Johnny and Jason to make sure the taps would be the right size and, and everything. And uh, I don't think staff has any, any objections. 
Very uh, good. Yeah, I just want to say I also appreciate um, uh, the concrete numbers. <laughs> so I appreciated uh, what you wrote, Emily, and also what's in the resolution, just to quantify, uh, you, you know, what the the village is supporting because I do think that relates to the discussion that we're going to be getting more into. So, so thank you. And I would like to say that Home Inc. just dedicated their, their 20th house um, last Friday. It was uh, not a new family to Yellow Springs, right? A, an existing family, but it was the house on, uh, on King Street that was part of the auction um, that, uh, that Home Inc. purchased and, and renovated. So um, congratulations on that. And we're ready to take a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item is um, resolution 2016-37 title or read it in uh, let's read the whole thing it's right. short <clears throat> this is authorizing the village manager to solicit to list to solicit requests for proposals for the completion of an assessment of Yellow Springs fiber needs and options Whereas Council for the Village of Yellow Springs wishes to fully consider the feasibility of a municipal fiber network to serve the village as a whole, and whereas the group known as SpringsNet has done extensive research into the possibility of such a municipal fiber, fiber network and supports further investigation of the same, and whereas Council appreciates the efforts of the group known as SpringsNet and agrees that further investigation is necessary to make an informed decision regarding construction of a municipal fiber network as a Village of Yellow Springs utility, and whereas Section 206.01 of the codified ordinances of Yellow Springs, Ohio, requires that contracting for services in excess of $30,000 in value must be part of, of a competitive bidding process. Now, therefore, counsel for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby resolves that. Section 1, the village manager is authorized to issue a request for proposal for a needs assessment for a municipal fiber network to serve the Village of Yellow Springs. Section 2, this resolution shall become effective immediately upon its adoption. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Uh, Patty, and we talked about this at the last meeting. I think that there may have been um, a few modifications to the proposal. Um, there, there were a few, um, not very many. There are a couple of, uh, apparently I'm not spelling Springs Net exactly right. I guess they have a hyphen between Springs and Net. So I need to make that correction um, in the RFP. But also I'm going to flesh out the existing fiber section just a little bit more. Thor Sage gave me a little bit more information just to put in that. Um, but other than that, um, this proposal is uh, essentially what the, uh, the village managers, fiber advisory board, and I uh, have been working on for the past uh, three weeks. And um, we feel it's ready to go. If council approves it, we can get it out and stick to the timeline that is presented there. Um, and do we have any idea what we expect to get back, I mean, were we totally? Um, uh, well, it's yeah. It, it, as far as the cost, as far everyone that I've checked with that's done a similar study to this have gotten bids anywhere from zero to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I'm going to ballpark this at fifty to sixty thousand dollars. I think we can get a decent um, a decent product for that that will help council make the decisions moving forward. And you, you'll see in my manager's report that um, I also want council's permission to apply to the community foundation um, to um, get a grant to help with this. Okay. So. And um, what fund will we will these funds come out of? Can, can they come out of? Can it come out of the electric fund? Um, I don't know how it could come out of the electric fund because it's not necessarily a, a, an electric utility. It might in the end be a revenue for the electric utility. Um, Melissa, what do you think? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it would all depend on how much money we're talking about, where we take it from. But okay. the general fund would probably be the most likely. Yeah. Okay. That's the cleanest. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I, I have two. One, one is what I think Judith said last time. I just wanted to make sure, like, on the page where it says public-private partnership. I just wanted to be clear that that whoever gets this recognizes that we're not necessarily wanting pro private, pro I mean, public-private. Right. 
one of the um, one of the things that we did change is if you look under governance and ownership strategies, is I, I believe that's where you, you're looking. Um, it says options must include full government ownership oh, okay, of yeah, the utility. I, I didn't see that. Yeah. So great. And then the other question is, does the word premises uh, mean anything, not just homes? It means homes, businesses, okay. um, any kind of the facility, mm -hmm. any kind yeah. of premise. Okay. Only my question. Any other questions? We're ready to take a vote? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Um, and the last resolution, just read by title only. This is authorizing the village manager to enter into an agreement with Arbor Care for 2016 utility line clearance, section three of the village. Okay. And can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Patty? Uh, this is our annual agreement uh, for line clearance uh, for the electric utility. Uh, we only got one response this year. It was from Arbor Care. Um, the section of the village that will be affected is from, um, trying to describe this appropriately, from the high school and Antioch Midwest north all the way to uh, Yellow Springs Fairfield and over to High Street. So it's essentially the, um, if you can see the yellow area, it's essentially the uh, western half of the village um, that will be affected. Um, that's okay. it's pretty straightforward, so. Any questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Uh, now is the time in the agenda when we hear from citizens about items that are not on the agenda. Uh, we ask that you come to the podium and uh, you have three minutes to speak. Seeing and hearing none, I'll come back. Whoops, excuse me, my phone decided it wanted to speak apparently. <laughs> it wants to speak. <laughs> Jeez. Um, Okay, we'll move on to old business. Um, the first item is community development funding, and I will turn that over to Brian. Um, so this did not get into the packet, but uh, I did put together a narrative, um, and maybe I should read it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, uh, and you'll notice I put the village values in the header, and that reminded me, after hearing Emily read number three, that we need to add um, abilities as well. We talked yeah. about that last time. Um, somehow that got dropped off. But anyway, um, based on the belief that community development is highly valued by the citizens of Yellow Springs, Village Council provides a limited amount of funding to quality of life initiatives and activities. This small amount, less than 1% of the village's annual budget, not only supports ec economic development, environmental sustainability, and other village values and goals, but it is also an investment that keeps our community thriving. Policy considerations representing citizens' expectations, such as those that have led Village Council to fund Human Relations Commission projects, uh, for example, Village Value 3, being a welcoming community to diversity, and the mission of the R HRC to promote harmony and eliminate discrimination can effectively guide Council's decisions to fund the work of other commissions or to support local nonprofits, NGOs, community organizations and businesses. In many cases, the village has supported events and other initiatives by providing village property, staff time, and infrastructure gratis. Importantly, the value of this support should be documented given the intentionality of this funding strategy and incentive policy to retain or attract business should follow these same policy considerations. Moving forward, council could refine the application process for village support, which could be consistently applied regardless of the entity making the request for funding. This would include formalizing the policy considerations that are already in place and determining the best review process to ensure that taxpayer dollars are being appropriately used to further the interests of our community. To help frame this discussion, it is useful to generate a comprehensive list of community development funding examples, understanding the actual cost of the village, uh, e.g. staff time, is also relevant to determining best practices in this area. Council can also determine whether a fixed budget amount should be established for community development funding. Um, so what I tried to do was just kind of put together 
at least what, what I've been trying to articulate uh, at council table, reflecting on uh, a lot of the good work that I think Karen has done that's already brought forward some of these examples and maybe suggest a way forward. Um, so anyway, but I guess I, I thought maybe this could help start the discussion. So I'm a little confused. Are you, we've got funding of commissions and then we have community development funding. Are you putting those under the same? I was a little so confused. right now, I'm thinking about sort of in this policy realm, how we can be consistent you know, across the board. Um, and then process wise, maybe we do need to think about um, how commissions operate differently from other requests. Um, but for now, I at least wanted us to think about it in a similar framework, primarily because I think everything spins off of village values. And then from there, of course, our goals are often accomplished by our commissions, or they help support that. And I also think the missions are tied to those village values as well. So that's why I, I pulled it together initially um, so that we could start thinking about what that process would look like and whether we need two processes. I guess when I think about, for example, the, the selfie spot was the most recent application, but we also had the same form that was used for the Arts Council and um, Tecumseh Land Trust. I envision that we could use that same form for our commissions as well, for example. So every year they come and say, for example, HRC, we want to do block parties, we want to you know, fund certain number of speakers and that sort of thing. It doesn't have to be super detailed, but I imagine everybody kind of presenting in the same way. And then highlighting what those values are, what those goals are to help us make a good decision. So what is 1% of our annual budget? 30,000-ish, uh, 33 uh, <coughs> this year. So I got that number, and actually <coughs> Melissa helped put these numbers together um, for the levy, um, and we looked at you know, what I'm <coughs> calling community development funding. So you know, that's the 8,000 budget for HRC, adding in some of the other small things we've done. Um, and, uh, and they have stayed below 30,000, at least for the past couple of years. For, you're talking about they've stayed below 30,000 for council? Um, right, okay. right. What do you mean? I'm for requests that come directly through council, oh, through council okay. commissions. So that doesn't, so that doesn't include events though, you're saying? Correct. Okay. Yeah, my, my, yeah, uh, that part we haven't quantified yet, so. Okay. Say that last bit. Uh, we haven't quantified um, some of these details like what staff time costs for supporting events, for example, which I do think is the next part of the discussion. What we're trying, what we're part. trying to do with that part is to come up with an average hourly salary for the members of the de various departments that mm -hmm. that do those events. Because, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's all of them, sometimes it's half of them, sometimes it's just one or two of them. And so, you know, we can't. In order to be as fair as possible, what we're doing is just taking the members of the crews, the two crews that primarily respond to those, and coming up with an average hourly wage. Um, and then we're not including any administrative time or anything like that because it's generally relatively low. Um, but is the, like the, say, street fair is an example of an event. Is that coming out, of, that's not coming out of $30,000? It comes, that comes out of, no, that comes out of, right now, it comes out of the departmental budget. No, I know, but are you it's thinking not, that it would? Right. Uh, I think we need to know those numbers, and then that's how we start to decide what is the right, I guess, amount, you know, to put into this kind of community, you know, kind of spending. 
If um, I remember correctly, what community development was, it was mediation, HRC, um, I think cable access might have been in there. It was some of the miscellaneous things that are more community oriented. So it was all of those budgets basically lumped together into that category. Yeah, and, and I guess the way I'm thinking about it now is that we have, we've put staff time in with property, you know, use of property, infrastructure, that sort of thing. So, you know, that is part of this discussion is, are we gonna break that out? Um, which I think we need to understand what, um, you know, what, what that cost is. And then I think that factors in, so. But you're not necessarily saying it would come out of the 30,000? Um, not, at this point it hasn't. Um, no, and then, no, but. Were you suggesting that it should, or? Uh, I'm not, not sure. sure. It's too early to say. It's too early to say. I, I mean, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure what the, you know, one thing that I think we have to discuss is what is the right amount for us to invest in community development? And, I mean, honestly, I'll say I feel like we are kind of in the right area for the things that we do. Um, but, you know, I, I haven't seen all the numbers. but. Yeah, I don't know if that, you know, we're, we should peg ourselves to 1% of our budget or not. Um, but I think that we are, you know, I would recommend that we look at all these decisions for funding those things in a similar manner. Is green space funding part of this? <laughs> no. Okay. But, but it, I mean, it, well, it potentially should be. Should be, yeah. I mean, it's because it's not, it's it's a, it's a it's a value. I mean, it's not a um, it's it's not doing anything directly for the village budget. I mean, it's 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 helping to support a value which is number six um, stewardship of land resources. Um, what about parks, swimming pool, all the things? It not? could be. I mean, it. I mean, I mean, the difference is mm -hmm. that those are those are in our budget right. and are you know basically staying within our budget, where the green space fund is likely going to be um, given given to somebody. I mean, that eventually, and when it, when it gets big enough, and when there's a when there's a property, how much we'll, is there now? Do you know? Um, green space has in it right now. Um, It's got a hundred and ninety-five thousand right now. I mean, we seem to just be in an impasse on this, and and you know, I maybe the next step makes sense for although although there there is information. I mean, one of the things we were talking about. Um, for commissions, although I, are we st are we keeping that as a separate as a separate discussion item, the commission one, or are we rolling that into this discussion? I mean, I think they're connected. So, I, I, I do think that there was some dis some consideration that we were giving of actually giving budgets to other commissions, and at some point we've got to give staff direction on that if if we're going to do that. Um, right, and and it, it is the appropriate time to discuss it because. We're going to be starting the budget process here in a month and a half. Mm -hmm. And so it's the perfect time if council decides that they are going to give budgets to other commissions to make that determination. So I guess I'm, I, this has been sort of a nagging <coughs> kind of issue for some years. And I, but I don't really know what it is we're trying to solve. It seems like what we're doing, what's been, go, what's been happening, it seems like it's working pretty well. <laughs> Um, why are you I don't I mean no. I guess I'm just not entering into this because I'm not sure that spending all this time and I, I mean I think I guess sort of what maybe do well saying, I don't I think know what we're doing uh, maybe there's something is, is working and I do think that I appreciate I, staff looking I just took over I know you did <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think there have been questions, citizen questions has, has provoked this discussion. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, part, part of it. it. Things like? Home Inc. Home Inc. Yep. Uh, the, uh, you know, street fair, 
uh, some people have asked about. Some people have not been happy about HRC having a, a budget. Um, so it seems like it's, and I appreciate the idea of trying to link what we do with, uh, with uh, you know, the values of the village and that we're not just willy-nilly giving out money. I'm a little worried about saying 1% of, of our budget we're going to give towards these kinds of things. We've got a lot of NGOs or, you know, nonprofits in the village that do all kinds of great work for, you know, for the well-being of our community. And most of them don't come to us for money. Or if they do, like this I think is such a good use of our money, the request that Home Inc. just made, because it leverages a lot more money. So it's really a small amount of money that we're giving that could leverage a lot of money that helps our goal, it's community, you know, it's economic development. And so, but I'm a little worried if we say there's that money out there, you know, that's, that basically people can apply for, all of a sudden we're going to be getting applications and uh, that could take up a lot of time right. and be small amounts of things. And then um, the other thing, the same with the commissions. Um, Originally, HRC, I had made that recommendation many years ago for, the, for HRC to have that budget because most of our goals, most of the values of the village, you know, uh, are things that really staff are involved, you know, are big chunks of our budget or, or bigger chunks of our budget, economic development. I mean, for a while we had a person, a part-time person, you know, doing that. But the one value, the, the sort of being a welcoming community, there was no financial resources behind it and, and HRC was kind of not able to get a lot done you know and so the fact that they and the idea of giving them a little bit of financial resource and to put it behind that goal so that it have more meaning you know it's an important and I think it's become a very important goal of the village and HRC is not the only one doing things related to it well, the nonprofits are. so anyway uh, I'm just well, I, I want to say yeah. two things. I, I agree with you. I don't, I don't necessarily think we should set an exact mm -hmm. amount. Mm -hmm. And my reference to 1% was primarily because I don't think we have diverted a lot of funds in this direction. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to make that clear to people. Right. Just mm -hmm. highlighting that, you know, it's not this excessive amount. Right. But I love what you said about leveraging those funds. I mean, again, when I look at this whole make proposal, 2500 bucks that's going to, you know, be leveraged into almost a million. I mean, that's, that's the kind of stuff we want to see in, in that area, I think. But not everybody's going to be able to do that, right. of course, you know. But. Right. But I think what it really what it really comes down to is is council council being convicted and and being supportive of these and and um, being able to state with confidence and and conviction that we support this kind of spending, which I think we've done, and I think that um, you know for whatever it might be whether it's whether it's events that bring people to town that contribute to economic development whatever it might be if that is something that council wants to see the village be doing i think we just need to articulate that and i think that's part of the comments that i've heard from citizens are does council know what they're spending the money on you know, does council know what there's what HR what grants HRC is giving? Does council know what the events cost? That those have been the questions posed to me, and I think it's more of a do you know kind of question than it you shouldn't do it kind of question. Is spending included in the HRC annual report I to council? So, I think so yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I know, and I know that HRC also started asking for uh, follow-up reports from grantees to include. Correct. That I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's good. I know they. All, I know they started asking for that as well. So. Yeah, I mean that historically that was done, and then I think it kind of fell off. So. Right. And 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 you know perhaps this is alleviated by a central process where everything is considered through one process. Um, you know the the process that council currently uses maybe for instance you give HRC a budget but if somebody wants to apply to HRC it comes in the same way through my office I give it to HRC to consider 
they approve or disapprove, and it, then it comes to council, just so you know what's going on. And, you know, that way it's a, it's a process. Everything would go through the same process in that way. That might give council a better understanding and help you redefine that. But, you know, just some kind of centralized process, I think is what Brian was kind of alluding to. It could even go into the consent agenda as like a monthly Correct. funding request, and Correct. all the funding requests are included in that consent agenda. You're, are you talking about for HRC? Or, I mean, any of the funding requests that would come in, if they were all being funneled through one um, entity, right. such as the manager's office? For, for instance, one thing I've heard is that um, the energy board would like to be considered for a budget. And I know that one thing Karen said to me is that she would like to see them start some kind of program on energy efficiency for <laughs> residents and things like that. So they could make a funding request to do an event of some kind. And it could go through the process and council could, you know. If and they were given a budget, it could still be theirs to control and say they, they say they want to spend it on the event. But council would understand that that's what's happening. Right. And I want to highlight something else that Judith, you mentioned. Uh, as a motivation for HRC and funding that I have heard from some of my commission members, <clears throat> which is that, you know, some kind of budget would create incentive uh, and, and more ownership and, and working to get certain things done. So I, I thought that was interesting. I just heard that from somebody today. I think instead of it being an HRC budget, since that's the department that it's labeled as in the general fund, it could just be commission budgets, and then each commission is allocated a certain amount, but it all comes from the same pot. Mm -hmm. So that if, you know, one, one commission isn't spending everything that they needed and another commission might be in need, then it was all in the same area to be considered. Just a thought. And and you know, I mean, we have flexibility in the budget. I mean, mm -hmm. if something comes up, we can always mm -hmm. we can always add money to the budget if for for a project that um, may not be budgeted. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess ultimately my plug is for consistency, and I think we've done some things to get there, um, and uh, you know, and definitely I, I agree that the the current form that we have can be uh, better refined so I mean events are <coughs> events are a little bit different animal um, because they're 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 time based as opposed to economic as opposed to just money just right. just handing out money mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how that gets looked at differently well I mean one thought I have is that I mean an, an event there may be a request for village support tied to that event, right? Um, you know, for example, if they want to use the Bryan Center lawn, uh, you know, they could, certainly they can make the request for us to support part or all of those fees. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that's something I think we would make a decision on based on some of these factors. Well, and, and one, one strategy that staff came up with was that you would uh, council could make a policy to forgive the first x number of hours of manpower or something f for each event or whatever or do it on some kind of sliding scale i mean there have been a lot of things that have been discussed that that staff and it's it's a sticky it's a sticky subject because you know, it varies so widely um, you know what's asked for at an event what's needed i mean it could be anywhere anything from just putting up a couple of barricades and putting out some cones to divert traffic to something more full scale. So it, will, it varies greatly. But, it, but again, I think what's not being considered with those events, just like we were talking about with Home Inc., what the money that it's leveraging is, is what's not being considered about the event is, are those events leveraging right. something else? And, and they're, they're just being looked at in kind of a silo that these are events and they take staff time mm -hmm. and we want to charge for them because they take staff time but right. they're also they're they're just as equally contributing to village values as anything else is so what's the proposal in terms of the budgetary discussions coming up is staff because i 
I mean, I think this discussion is definitely worth having, but I'm not sure exactly what we're, what, how to come to some conclusion of it. But then there's also the, the staff is going to come with some numbers for the events, correct? And correct. And we, we have the general numbers for the events, um, and they <coughs> range anywhere from $88, <laughs> which is the just barricades and et cetera. I mean, there are events that don't really cost us anything. For instance, the parades, the police department usually handles that with on-duty personnel. Nobody needs to be called in. They lead the parade, they end the parade. You know, it doesn't take a, a, an enormous amount of time. And it, we have some of the numbers of what it costs us, and we're, we're continuing to capture those. Um, that's why we're trying to come up with the hourly rate. Um, and we're not including anything like electric usage or, or water usage or anything like that. So it's just strictly manpower that we're talking about. So I can bring those if council wants to see them to, to the meeting in August, um, if, if you want to see them. I mean, staff's concern was the impact on the budgets because we have, in the summertime, we have event after event after event. And so it, since they're normally on the weekends, it's overtime, so it's a bigger impact. Um, and, you know, that was more the concern than anything else is the, the impact on departmental budgets. Um, that could be compensated for if council chooses to, to make that decision by putting a little bit more into their budgets to take special events out of. But, but we are, we were presented with a, with a pretty healthy budget at the last uh, with the with the with the um, auditors, yeah. um, the 2017 budget, um, and citizens did just pass a levy. Mm -hmm. um, what year? A year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. So I think that's um, you know that's also something to look at is you know is um, when you know at what point um, it, it's really it's really absolutely necessary for the budget. I mean if it's individual department budgets that seems um, a little different than the whole budget um, well I would appreciate uh, what you were talking about bringing the cost of different kinds of events and and using and and folding that into this discussion mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that would be at the next meeting the mm -hmm. August 15 15 15th yeah okay Sounds good. So, so can I, I just want to add one more thing. I also think that, you know, in this whole discussion is the village getting credit for its support. So, you know, I, I mean, I, that to me is a piece of this that, you know, that we are officially sponsors mm -hmm. in events that we support. So I appreciate what you wrote, by the way. Oh, thanks. Um, so we, I think we we're done with the funding of commissions discussion. Can we just we're we're going to have to come back to it. Already. Right. I mean, but yeah. but mm -hmm. I don't think we need to talk yeah. about it more tonight. I mean, I, I assume that one maybe we'll just talk about during during the budget. But do we want to ask? Let the commissions know. Uh, do we want to ask them? What so. do you want, or do we want to just offer that there's going to be a bud? There's going to be some money available if if you have a need you could bring it you know fill out an application thing. I mean I'm thinking of I'm thinking maybe we just double or triple what we've been doing and um, for HRC and I like Melissa's idea of having a, a commission budget and um, we could always add to it I mean you know and we you just might have want... it available if people have a specific right. thing or do we yeah I mean them? it's 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 you know we, commissions have talked about it a lot um, you know, it's been so long since I've actually had a, been been that involved with the commission. I mean, economic sustainability has, I don't even know if they've talked about it. There probably isn't much of a need. But anyway, um, uh, I mean, I guess if, if you all have meetings, I mean, it probably makes sense to run it by them. But I don't, I think we can probably <coughs> hold that information till when we do the general fund discussion. I don't see the need to have a special discussion about it. <coughs> But well, I think in you, terms of the commissions, that uh, it would be good for the liaisons to come to the next commission meetings and say, you know, we're looking at the budget for 2017. Let's think about things that you might want right. to do um, and how much that might 
cost because we want to come back to council. Right. No, absolutely. But I don't think we need to talk about it until we council doesn't need to talk about it. I don't think until the budget. <coughs> we can you can bring that information and we can just fold it into the budget discussion. Okay. And um, I can I can also for the fifteenth meeting um, continue to work with Judy to tweak the form so we have that to look at too and add some of these things that we discussed. Okay. Uh, next is a discussion of the Army Corps of Engineers grant and the status of the CBE. Um, Melissa or Patty? Um, I'm going to let Melissa start. She prepared uh, quite a bit of this document um, that is in your packets tonight um, with collaboration from myself and Denise. And so I'm just going to let her handle that. Okay, so you'll find a wealth of historical information in the packet. Um, the first document is a uh, synopsis of significant events, and this ties together um, a lot of the moving parts that are related to the uh, property um, known as the Center for Business and Education, or CBE. So there's information about the grant. There's information about um, Ordinance 2014-16 and then the uh, referendum. There's information about community resources. And then there's information about the land transfer, which was just um, announced by community resources at the last meeting as their um, intention um, to transfer the land uh, at that property to the village. And then there is also attached to that document um, a chronology of events from 2004 to 2016. So I think that it's important to note that this uh, project um, and work that has been um, on the Center for Business and Education has been going on for approximately 12 years now. And I think actually there's, there's been much, much work before that, but the actual acquisition of the land occurred in 2004. So it, it kind of goes through all of the work that's been done it folds in everything from the acquisition of the land to the grant to um, all the way up until uh, present day where the uh, land transfer announcement, announcement was made. And then there are also some projections of uh, possible events um, that could occur in the future should council decide to move forward with proceeding with the grant and the land transfer. Um, there's also some financial information as it relates to the grant. Um, on one page there is uh, the original agreement outline and then the revised agreement outline. And um, basically the total project costs are also outlined in, in both of those and then the potential reimbursements to the village which are notable and I'll go through some of that. There are also some documents that were submitted by Mike Heinz in the reduction as they relate to the reduction in scope for the grant. Um, the original grant um, was to extend water, sewer, and uh, stormwater management all the way through the uh, Center for Business and Education property. And that total work that was um, originally agreed to with the Army Corps of Engineers was uh, projected to be 596000 So this reduction in scope, which Mike Heinz has uh, prepared for us, is uh, construction costs are estimated at about $260,000. There are still the costs that were incurred as part of the original agreement, which the Army Corps of Engineers is still going to reimburse us for. but. If we were to reduce the scope and uh, move forward with construction, it would be approximately $260,000, bringing that total project cost um, to $458,000. So that is a brief overview of what is in the packet. There's also a map of how far up the utilities would be extended in this reduced scope, which basically go from the intersection of East Enon and Dayton Yellow Springs Road up to the turn lane where the entrance to the CB, CBE was proposed. So there's a lot of information in the packet and um, basically what we are asking council to consider this evening is whether or not they would like for us to uh, move forward with uh, legislation in the form of a resolution at the next meeting in order to um, reduce the scope of the grant and um, revise the agreement with uh, Army Corps of Engineer in order to uh, move forward with this reduced scope project. 
So Patty and I are available to answer any questions that you have, but we tried to pro provide quite a bit of information ahead of time. Where do things stand on the land transfers? Are things in process? Chris is doing a title search. Um, he's already got that started. Um, that's the first thing that has to be done. I don't know what the projected completion of that is. I will think later this week, and then we'll begin discussion drafting the termination agreement to facilitate the transfer of the property. And I think we can have it done by the 15th. Any comments or questions from council? Um, well, I. I do support extending the utilities as per the information that you've given. Mm -hmm. And I also appreciate all the, the timeline and all the financial information. And I have one cautionary comment um, in regard to the uh, synopsis of significant events, the last point, which says December 2016, begin marketing the property. Mm -hmm. um, I suggest that we delay that um, given the um, resistance uh, and, and uh, conflict that's come up in the community regarding that property. I mean, there's some people that want it to remain a cornfield, um, which I, I, I would like to see it develop. But given that the village is going to own the property, uh, I think we need to have some community involvement it, before we look at marketing. And, and it seems like the Economic Development, Sustainable Economic Development Commission would be a locus to start thinking about that. Right. It, I would agree with that, Marianne. I, 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 I want to caution. I mean, this is um, part of, of um, community resources desire in doing this is, um, is that they still have every desire for this property to move forward the way it was, at, at least in some portion of the way it was envisioned. So, um, you know, they, I think they want, they want to, to see or hear some sort of commitment from the village that, you know, we're, we're extending the infrastructure that we're, that we are moving forward. Um, so, and I agree with you that might be, that language could probably be changed, you know, talk about the future of the project or the property to um, work to develop uh, a, a proposal, work to develop um, a concept for the use of the property, something like that. Well, um, I, I, and I think that was staff's intention by, by saying begin marketing the property. The beginning of that process would be a determination as to how we want to market that. and for what uses and what kind but, of what kind of RFP but, you want to put out. But let's change the word marketing. Yeah. Um, yeah, or else, you know, we're going to have a full room here next council meeting. Um, so it's about planning, right? Yeah. Right. But, you know, uh, when do we have to make a decision on the extension? and not lose the we don't have any hard fast deadline in terms of making a decision mm -hmm. um, basically this work on trying to clean up this grant to figure out what we're owed and to get reimbursed and you know moving forward I mean this has all been going on for you know nearly two years mm -hmm. so the Army Corps has had this money on their books for a very long time and they are starting to feel pressure in order to you know get things moving or get them off the books so we are pretty far along in our process in 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 comparison to other uh, communities in which have been you know long awarded money so I don't feel that we have any sort of threat per se but um, I did uh, talk to the contact at uh, Army Corps, the, the project manager over this that we've been working with very closely. 
and I said, you know, the, the plan is to have a discussion at this meeting. Hopefully we can gain support to move forward and then we could bring legislation in order to move forward at the second meeting in August. Losing the first meeting in August, you know, kind of sets us back a little bit, but um, she was in support of that, but I could always see if, if we would need another meeting in order to discuss before legislation is brought, I could make sure that I get that cleared with her and we would have plenty of time, so. But I, I like this timeline. I think, it, I think it really gives us plenty of time um, to make to be having discussions it gives us another meeting another full meeting um, final RFP um, isn't until September 6th then we've got actually got two meetings in September before we actually award the, the contract so I mean I'd like the idea of getting that construction done this season and just being done with it and and having that property um, ready I think it's I think it's shows good faith to community resources in wanting to um, work with the village to um, make use of this piece of property and um, to 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 give us an opportunity to um, replace the three hundred thousand dollars that came out of our revolving loan fund I think the next meeting we should not have a resolution, but that we should um, have a discussion on um, on that question. And on what I, I, question? On the question of the extension, you know, going ahead with the plan to extend. Why don't Why don't we just finish? Why aren't we having that discussion now? This was on the agenda. People knew this was on the agenda, and if they wanted to come to the meeting, they could have come to the meeting. What What do you want to discuss, Jude? No, I just want to give people an opportunity to, um, so discussion of Army Corps of Engineers grant. So how many people are aware of what was being discussed? I mean, considering the fact that we had a packed house at the last meeting, and many of them were here for that, mm -hmm. and it's on the agenda, I, I'm shocked that there aren't people here. Mm -hmm. um, for both, dis for all three discussions. I mean, we had a full house for Morris Bean. We had a full house for, um, I guess, for this, so for the CBE. So, and then there were other issues. But um, I, I, and we, we indicated to Chris, I mean, we, we gave him the, the step forward. We indicated we were going to be talking about it. It was on the agenda. We talked about it in agenda planning. So, there's really no secret that we were going to be continuing to talk about this. There was a large edit or a large um, article in the paper about it. I don't think that yeah. people should be surprised that this is being discussed. But I would like to add too, but as Melissa noted, this grant has been on the books for a number of years, and what I, what nobody has mentioned, but I think it's important, at least from Melissa and my perspective, is that. This needs to be closed out on our village books um, and to, to get it off of there as a potential audit item. And this is a reimbursement grant. And what that means is that we have to pay the money up front and then we get 75% of it back, minus the, the administrative cost of the Army Corps. And so we would need to allow the time for the construction to uh, everything to be, the RFP to be issued and then awarded and the construction to be done and try to get that reimbursement back from the Army Corps by the end of the year just to make, you know, clean the books up and not have to carry it over to another year in the middle of it. Um, so I think that that's one thing that we need to be aware of as well. So. Can I, just to clarify, I mean, is this all in our court at this point? Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. they've, they've said they are definitely going to repurpose the grant. We, we've worked to completely redo the agreement. Um, Chris has worked with uh, their legal counsel, and the agreement has been totally revised, and it's, it's ready once we get the green light from counsel. Right. Okay. So all yeah. of the back work has been done in order to get this to where it is. And, I mean, every... Everybody from the Army Corps and from Village Legal has agreed on the agreement so far, so we just need acknowledgement from Council. Yeah. I'm for holding off the discussion, or having a discussion, not putting it on as a resolution. I'll just say that again. Uh, it's, uh, you may feel that people know, but I feel people don't know, and it would be better, it's always better to have those discussions up front rather than to, you know. 
although, but that's although but the you people don't who brought the three of the people who brought forth the referendum were at the last mm -hmm. Yeah, my, yeah. my sense okay. is that people know, and I have talked to a couple mm -hmm. people. Okay, I mean, so approach this. Right. Okay. Other members of council, do we? Well, I mean, the other thing that was emphasized at the last meeting was that this was actually what they were pushing council to do was limit the project <laughs> to extending the utilities to the edge. Right. Um, I mean that was you know that's that's what they wanted that was one of the things that came out of from the referendum folks one of the recommendations um, or an alternative to the entire infrastructure um, Jerry to me it, you know it's, it's time to to close this issue and it's been, like I say, it's been advertised, it's talked about the referendum, and re regardless of what we decide or what is decided to be done with the land, unless we keep it as a cornfield, we're going to have to extend the utilities up to it. And it makes sense to do it with someone else's money versus our money, given that it's 75 cents on the dollar, but it's still, you know, we got the grant, let's go ahead and do it. Okay. And then we can, we can discuss later about what we're going to do with this big area. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely in support of, of moving forward with this timeline as it's been proposed by staff. So we'll, we'll talk about it again when we get to, um, when we get to agenda planning, just to just to reinforce or just to, to review. Um, any other discussion about this? Um, okay, uh, Judith, well, we just, we asked, so Judith asked that this ordinance 2016-14 um, be added to old business so that we can have a little bit more discussion about it. Um, this is the ordinance that was paired with the Morris Bean uh, agreement um, because we had we had passed an ordinance a few years ago that um, did not allow um, connections outside the village limits um, although we discovered that that conflicted with our charter which gave us the option or the opportunity to to do those extensions um, legal counsel felt that we needed to get those two in, in a line that it, that it would be good to change the, uh, the ordinance um, even though we were the charter trumped it so um, the language that has been added um, is no sewer connection shall be made to properties outside the village corporation limits without the determination by village council that the extraterritorial connection is for the protection of the health safety and welfare of village citizens um, so that's really what what kind of separates and and in some respects does, you know, it, it's, it's the language to start to, to say that, you know, we are not going to do this for everyone. We, are, we, we um, granted the Morris Bean um, extension for the health, safety, and welfare of village citizens to keep them um, from putting a package plant over our well field. So um, it's hoped that this language would, would clarify that. Um, Judith. I think you mentioned at one point that you had some alternative well, language. Well, um, what I was thinking would be, uh, you know, part of this is to, to provide hopefully direction for future councils, you know, um, in terms of our thinking about what they would be thinking about should they decide to um, allow extraterritorial connections to occur. Um, but I would like more language about why and why uh, we shouldn't do it except under extreme circumstances, you know, talking about sort of the well-being of the, in mm -hmm. terms of, um, anyway. And the other thing is this, this language without the determination that it's for the protection of health, safety, and welfare of village citizens can cover anything. <laughs> so that language could be used to justify anything in my book um, because presumably council doesn't make decisions unless it's for the health safety and welfare of village citizens 
right. any decision. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that can justify anything. So I would just like to see um, some conversation about why uh, we don't extend beyond our territories, you know, why it's not, why uh, it's in the best interest of a community. And then to just add as an, you know, only under extreme circumstances of, and it's mainly so that um, somehow we can't be forced into something. That's, right. That's been my main concern about it. Chris, do you have some, do you have some language that you could, I mean, and again, what I think, I don't know how you feel about it, but, but I mean, you've, I think, I think we're agreeing with you. And if Chris could bring something back yeah. to another meeting, I'm not yeah. sure that we need to talk about the specifics now. Yeah, I don't know now. the exact language, but. I, I, mean, I certainly can try and draft something. It seems to me that what you, you're not really articulating what a legal standard is. The legal standard would be uh, the health, safety, and welfare, which is unlike what's typically in any of your legislation where you don't inherently have to articulate what that is. But this ordinance would require an affirmative statement by council to say, we've determined the following, and this is why it isn't we de I, I individually, if you're voting for it or against it, why you wouldn't. So I think implicit within that language, however, it doesn't give any historical connotation to that. And I think that's something you'd have to seek. Um, for example, if you look at Morris Bean dating back to 1992, there's just a lot of things that current council wouldn't know because of the, the, the history of those events. Certainly, uh, Judy could probably find some of those minutes and it might illuminate some of those things. So um, I can try to draft something that would incorporate what I'm hearing the, uh, the sentiment would be yeah. at council. I mean, if we if we need to keep in the health, safety, and welfare, if that's the legal lang language we, that we need to have in there, I think what Judith is saying is just if, if it's more if it can't even necessarily have teeth, if it's just more philosophical language, and is that explanatory language or something? I mean, it sounds like what Chris is saying is that this this is the teeth we need. The, these this is the legal phrase we need from a the lawyer's perspective and a court's perspective, that's the language that the court would look to in, in determining what's in, in that the best interest of the community based upon health, safety, and welfare, which is slightly different than some of the things that you do. And it also, uh, in effect, kind of mirrors the rationale behind emergency legislation uh, because there's something of a higher prior or higher consideration for that. I mean, I, let's work on, let's, yeah. you know, maybe if Judith has some specific ideas, do you have some? Well, I was just going to say that the simplest thing I think to do to address what Judith is asking for is to add another whereas that says, whereas this is not a, a, a regular practice because of the benefits of municipal mm -hmm. income tax, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And then you can get down to the, but under certain circumstances. Only under extreme right. circumstances. Right. Yeah. Right. So, well, and I wonder um, about the minutes, you know, we could find them from when you guys passed that prior just, ordinance, right? May have. Some language, you mean? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. So maybe Judy, that's something Judy and Chris. What was that, okay. around 2010 or something? 2012, um, I believe. 2012, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I think so. We're hearing support, so we'll let staff work so, on that. So I can <laughs> clarify what my task is. <laughs> I'm hearing a, an explanation within the whereas clause for the ordinance that makes sense and can easily be done. What's not clear to me is within the body of the new codified ordinance that will appear, are, we a, are you asking me to, to draft some language for that as well? For the codified ordinance. to replace this? To Good. replace the language, well, or to supplement the language that's in bold, yes. Yes. Well, there's the idea of extreme circumstances. <clears throat> okay. Somehow articulating that. Well, the, the one would be the whereas clause that Patty's suggestion would be kind of a policy statement. Right. In a broad sense. And then within the context of the codified ordinance, what actually appears in print for anyone to see. But you could also note it's only done under extreme circumstances in the whereas part. Uh, yes. Yeah. So. Okay, I, I, I understand. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get there yet, but I understand. <laughs> I mean, I think that uh, Yellow Springs, that there's a distinction in Yellow Springs between, say, Yellow Springs and Fairborn or Beaver Creek, who, 
who uh, seem to be happy about just extending their borders and extending whatever they can without any sense of community. And part of, I think, what we're concerned here is, is that we have this, this sense of community that's a geographical entity and we want to protect the, the village. And I don't know what kind of language would be in Well, there. what I'm hearing you say there is that that's kind of a value statement. That yes. there's, there's, the council regularly talks about the community values. So I, I think I understand and I can get some words on paper to see what you think. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Come on. Can you come no, up? Were you going to ask for a public comment on the, uh, uh, on the uh, rent? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I guess we'd, um, um, we've moved on, but um, we can, if you want to go back and say something, if you want to come up and say something, we that's know, fine. I've been waiting for you to ask if there was any public comment on the, on the Corps of Engineers grant. I'm again Rick Donahoe. And I think, I think that except, except going, for <coughs> going for and accepting this grant would be taking the village in a direction that we've already decided we don't want to go. I think that the results of the referendum uh, spoke quite convincingly to our not wanting not only to not fund inf infrastructure on the CBE with public money, but I think it also said that we don't want development on that piece of ground at all. Um, that's my opinion. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, Marianne, you want to talk about the, your proposal or your of the discussion on the utility roundup? Okay, so we're on new business? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, um, Council may remember that uh, the concept of um, ha getting money available for low-income people or people who need help with a particular utility bill came up in HRC and I think that it was Chrissy Cruz brought up this idea oh probably at least a half a year ago which is also why she started the group of village assistant network and has in fact through that group been helping people pay utilities and perhaps some other kind of bills so um, I, I wanted to pursue uh, formalizing this uh, uh, potential project. So Melissa was very busy and finally Melissa and I were able to get together. We talked about it. Um, I guess Melissa had put out uh, some feelers to find out some other communities that have done it and I got the names of two communities and have talked to those two communities. So um, what I wanted to do was put ha put this on the agenda to talk about it more fully to hopefully get council approval to it to move to not institute the program but to develop uh, a, come back with a potential this is how we could do it so so you you obviously got positive response or you've you, yes. You're of the opinion that this is something that we could. Uh, uh, yes, I, so do. I've talked to people in Napoleon and Defiance, Ohio, uh, about the program, their programs. I've also talked to Lori Kuhn with the Morgan Family Foundation, who was very enthusiastic about this idea, and Defiance. she and I talked about how, how to begin having more conversations about it. Um, I mean, there are various options on how to do it. Mm -hmm and I would present the options that I've discussed okay. and Melissa had some concerns which we could talk about as well but mostly I want to just get this on the table and either get a yay or nay from council in terms of either yeah go get some more information come back or no we're not interested okay well and and so it so at the next if wherever we put it on the agenda if we say it's the next meeting so you'll be bringing you'll be bringing basically your case so you'll be bringing yeah, the information up from the napoleon and defiance yeah maybe some information you've learned from lori i like the yeah. idea of potentially working through a grant funder um if that's the direction you're thinking um 
Melissa, um, you have concerns. Is, so will, will you bring those concerns mm -hmm. to the next meeting? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that. that we need to hear both. Mm -hmm. um, we need to have both. Okay. Yep. I Does that, that work for everybody? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Marianne. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Patty, your report? Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you'll see the construction outside in the parking lot. Johnny and his crew are working on getting the electric charging stations for the electric cars, um, as well as the new light poles here at the Bryan Center. Um, Boone Water System is, is flushing out our wells, which is a, a regular maintenance procedure. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, we have gotten the notice to proceed from the Ohio Public Works Department, and um, we have a potential uh, date of construction site. And I am excited to announce that just late this afternoon in the mail, I received the actual permit to install from the EPA Yay. for the water plant. And so, um, if you would all look at your calendars, um, if we are going to start construction on September the 12th, we'd like to do a groundbreaking ceremony tentatively um, one of the, the days after Labor Day, that in, in that week, but one of the days after. Since we have a meeting on the 6th, I'm thinking perhaps the 7th, 8th, or 9th um, would be a good time. Um, the street department, uh, you can see that Mark Fincham and his crew have still been busy throughout the village putting in some nice new sidewalks for us. Um, as I noted earlier, and I think I have council's support, I would like to apply to the Community Foundation for a grant to offset the, the needs of the fiber assessment. The big, big announcement, planning and zoning office will be closed for most of the month of December. Denise has lots of family plans and uh, she's going to take some time and, and just go enjoy yourself over the holidays. It's usually a very quiet time and we will be able to still process ordinary everyday permits. It's just things like conditional use and site review and things like that. We'll have to wait until Denise comes back. And the last thing I have that is not in my report, um, staff has been working on a of a combination event of a touch a truck uh, event combined with meet the village employees um, and we have tentatively scheduled that for August the 27th in the afternoon from 2 to 5. It will be either on Mills Lawn property or um, on Walnut and Short Street outside of Mills Lawn and we have several different entities that are going to bring pieces of large equipment. Our own departments will be participating, um, but we also have Miami Township Fire and Rescue. Um, we have uh, Care Flight. Uh, we have uh, the old timers are bringing some things. Easter Seals uh, are uh, going to bring some things. Goodwill. Uh, Western Southern Life will be doing Identikit kids uh, for oh, the wow. kids. Um, we are going to have village staff uh, grilling hot dogs and handing out hot dogs and water and chips and things. And so um, everybody just keep that in mind and we'll firm that up before the next meeting and, and have some more details. But it looks like it's going to be a fun day and hopefully it won't rain. And so that's a Saturday, it. right? It is a Saturday and uh, we'll be setting up about one and the event will run from, from two, to, uh, 2 to 5. And um, these are the invitations for uh, the, the Eastman dedication out at the water plant. As Brian noted, it will be on Wednesday, August the 10th at 11 a.m. So um, please let me know if you'll be attending. Very good. Can Same. I suggest uh, tofu dogs as well as hot dogs? <laughs> <laughs> for the ve vegetarians in town. <laughs> Thank you. Or is, is there something besides tofu? Is it? Whatever. I know there's like there are meatless hot dogs. Black bean, there are black bean burgers, but I thought maybe there were black bean hot dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds better than tofu. Mm -hmm. um, Melissa, I had nothing notable. It's just business as usual. So well, oh, except for all That's the CBE quick. stuff. Well, I mean that was obvious. <laughs> um, Judy, uh, just it's been <clears throat> a little bit busy. I'll be out between the 22nd of July and August 5th, and Kathy Gudgel will be covering that entire time, uh, 9 to 2, Monday through Friday. So she'll she'll handle okay. anything that comes by. Before I did, <laughs> okay. Um, next, we have board and commission reports. First, Jerry. Uh, planning, uh, <clears throat> of course, we announced that the, there won't be a meeting in the 
August. And uh, given that um, the planning office in here be closed, it'd probably be slow for us too. But uh, <clears throat> we're still looking at um, some of the uh, rewrites and, and updates in the meeting, uh, uh, the last meeting <coughs> was a surprise to all of us when we found out that the, <laughs> where the solar was going was residential. But the, the good thing about it is uh, the public helped us. And that's why more people should show up at some of our, our meetings. They're, they're knowledgeable and uh, the input really help so mm -hmm. I, have to, I have to thank those individuals for for, for for being there and helping us get through a tough issue great um brian um so a uh, community resources did meet last week and uh and i think karen uh described well the sort of intentions behind um what they're hoping to see happen with uh the village taking over the land um in terms of the Economic Sustainability Commission, uh, we did not have a quorum at our last meeting, which is, you know, it's summer. Um, but the focus is, continues to be on the revolving uh, loan fund and how we can revive that and um, working out some kind of recommendations for a village incentive policy that council can look at. Um, so that continues to happen. And the Arts and Culture Commission, uh, was not able to meet last week and um, we are looking for members so uh, uh, Dave Turner recently finished his term Jamie Sharp had to resign so so we are down to four members and uh, Judy I guess I'd appreciate if putting some out there about that because uh, I know the group is committed to um, continue to move the Vita forward they're working on um, an uh, art exhibit in the Bryan Center Community Gallery. And um, the other thing that's been brought kind of through Patty is thinking about funding potentially through an R Town grant, um, which I think could be a really good fit for Yellow Springs. A lot of economic development potential. Great. Um, Judith? Um, the, well, the Library Commission meets every other month, so they did not meet this uh, last month. but. Um, uh, it's just been just making sure there's the the follow through in terms of some of the small repairs of the building, um, and I sent a list to Patty and mm -hmm. and Jason. You know, is uh, I'm aware, and they're they're trying to get those things accomplished. Um, yeah, the committee's very uh, you know carefully overseeing the well-being of the building. Which Anything is, which with is Energy cool. Board. Energy Board uh, canceled the last meeting. I'm sure they'll be happy to hear about the, the new uh, uh, places for the electric, charging. the charging stations for the electric car, so that's cool. And Justice System Tax Force, the thing that um, we need to do now is to figure out the time and we plan to start meeting in September. Good job getting that together. Yeah, you, you and Marianne. Marianne. Okay, um, the mediation program has not met. It's going to meet in August. Um, actually, I think the 18th, so that would be after our second meeting. Um, I haven't uh, been liaisoning with uh, Steve Kahn. I will be contacting him. Uh, HRC did meet, and much of the discussion centered around issues regarding the, the police, and one thing that came out of that meeting was I suggested that that um, HRC write a letter uh, listing the concerns that had been brought to HRC and I had discussed this with Patty Patty requested that the letter be directed to her and copied to council and that letter is in the works I guess um, also um, uh, Gigi from the Emporium came to talk about uh, the Emporium's interest in the community broadband, and HRC um, supports the community broadband concept, in particular um, the uh, 
opportunity to provide to low-income people that I think Ellis Jacobs had talked about. Mm -hmm. um, there were no grants uh, given out at the last meeting. Uh, we also talked some about the, the concept of Indigenous Peoples Day and working on that a bit. Uh, the Environmental Commission did not meet. We're meeting tomorrow. The beaver. Oh, the beaver, yeah. Yes. Oh, finally. <laughs> um, so Jerry and I have interviewed a number of people for uh, the Beaver Management Task Force. And you have in front of you the names of uh, Vicki Hennessy, uh, Rick Donahoe, Brian Cott, Bettina Stolzenberg. Uh, also today we interviewed uh, Chad Runyon. So, all of the people on this list um, have some background experience and or education in natural resources, which is very cool. Uh, other than Brian Cott, who is a wildlife biologist at Antioch, uh, everyone else is a neighbor. Uh, mm -hmm. Vicki's property is not actually on the stream, but is just basically across the street from the stream. Everyone else has property that actually fronts on the oh, stream. Wow. Uh, or on the glass farm itself. So um, I think Jerry and I were both impressed with the people's interest in having beavers and the wildlife there and also managing whatever kind of issues would come up uh, in that regard. Uh, do you want to say anything, uh, Jerry? To follow up, and, and they knew something about beavers, they had Observed, observed them. Uh, they, they, they were very, very knowledgeable. And uh, the thing that I also was, you know, we, the committee that we put together, understand that the problems that also may occur with beavers, which was, you know, which was good. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah, the plan that was in there, yeah. I appreciated. The, the plan mm -hmm. sound, sounded good. So, yeah. And the, the plan is part of a larger document that Vicki had written a half a year ago or so. And then that document, we're gonna, I'm going to ask Judy to make copies. Well, Vicki will send the document to Judy <coughs> to make copies so that everyone on the task force gets a copy of it. Um, there is uh, one other person that we haven't been able to interview yet because she's been at an eco camp, Katina Eastman, uh, not Katina, uh, Becca Eastman, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and she t she's a teacher also. Oh, and then mix? Um, yeah. Jason would be, I guess we could say he would be the ex officio mm -hmm. member of the task force, um, and, I, and, and Tom Dietrich, who uh, is on the Environmental Commission and is also a neighbor. Um, would be on the task force, and that then that I would be the uh, the council liaison to the task force. So is that a motion and for nominations? So, yes. So I'm moved that we have uh, nominate the people listed on this uh, report, along with Chad Runyon, uh, to be on the Beaver Management Task Force. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Good job. Yeah, looks good. Uh, Green County Regional Planning <coughs> Commission, um, I don't think that there was much on the last agenda. It was a very short meeting, but um, uh, Ken LeBlanc, who's the director, is actually starting to do um, little three to four hour charrettes with some communities where they're going around. They're, he, the first one he's doing is with Bellbrook, then he's going to do one with um, Spring Valley to work on walkability and to work on improving their downtown core. So I'm I'm glad I've always wanted that group to be to do something besides. I mean they're they're planners. They're supposed to be planning for the whole county. I've always wanted them to be a little bit more involved in things. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to hear that. Um, there were other things in the in the packet from MVRPC, but I also this is a document that they just did. It's called the Tale of the Trails, and it just shows you the extent of the trail system that they manage, and um, it also gives some um, usage and some financial numbers, the economic benefits, the health benefits, 
um, the miles of trails, the number of communities, and, and the usage. So this, this to me is an absolutely um, fabulous document to help support um, trails in communities and I feel incredibly lucky that we have uh, the Little Miami Scenic Trail going right through the heart of Yellow Springs. Um, and for the chamber I um, put on the desk and I think it may have been in the online packet a copy of our of our 2015 annual report just for you to review. Um, we've actually we've been on a little bit of a hiatus for the summer um, in, as far as meetings are concerned. So um, our next meeting is actually April 18th. Is, it, is that the Thursday? And we're April actually, we're, 18th. It, April, geez, August 18th. And we're gonna be discussing, believe it or not, the holidays. So hmm. um, we're excited because we're um, gonna be working more closely with Mills Lawn PTO um, with some of their fundraising events um, to help promote those. So that's kind of it. Um, future agenda items. So we've got, so. Karen, do, yeah. can, can I ask one quick question? Sure. Uh, in this document, this thing on bikes. Mm -hmm. uh, drive your bike? Yeah, drive your bike. Is, is it, uh, did we get a few of these or this, is there a way that we can get this out to, because to, like, to me, and I don't know about the, the chief, but that, that to me is a real big issue. Right. Right, right the, the folks in Yellow Springs ride the bikes with no lights. Right, and, well, I actually, I like, you know, I mean, this is this is kind of a mixed document, and it's mm -hmm. like, this side is, is really, I think consumers could use it, riders, the, the rest of it is really more for people that, that um, uh, might be investing or might be have a business yeah. along the trail, but no, I, I do like that. If we could get something, um, even some signs or something, um, I do like that. You know, it's something when we do um, the, uh, if we do another bike event like we did in the spring, if we could, ha do we have lights do we, that we give away? I mean, that would be, a, that would be something to look into doing is actually giving away lights too. We gave away helmets. Right. Well, maybe, maybe the PD could collaborate with Rails to Trails and do maybe, bikes next year. Yeah, that was well, maybe we could do that for the for the August twenty seventh event. Oh, I mean, we'll August twenty seventh. The touch the and touch Oh yeah, yeah, that would be cool. I'll get one. Um, well, we could also we actually um, made a donation to uh, a Springfield program. Our police department did so. Maybe there's some quid pro quo. Your police. Our police department did donated oh. some helmets so oh. to their program. Um, um, when you're done, I do have one other thing. Okay, before we go on to future agenda. Yeah, items. Okay. Um, one concern that was brought up uh, at the last meeting, and I believe it was Chrissy Cruz that brought it up, and um, I have had since had another resident ask me about the same thing: is the two-hour parking signs uh, for downtown, and how to get those back up. And we're we were kind of stuck between. We don't want to drill holes in the new sidewalk, and we don't want to put them on the new light poles <laughs> the way they were before. Um, and so what uh, the solution that we came up, actually Johnny came up with, was he's looking for some brackets that will hold them out from the light poles. Um, so they're not actually attached to the poles themselves, but they hang in a bracket so that they're visible to the, to the, uh, the people who are parking, to the motorists, and they can see them, and that, that way the PD can then enforce that. So um, it's, a, it's just a nicer solution than, than belting them to the poles. And, and it, it, my concern was that if we put our, our signs on poles, it encourages people to put other things on our poles. And these are nice new poles. We don't mm -hmm. want them covered with, with all different kinds of things. So the solution we came up with was the brackets, and we're attempting to locate those so that we can get those signs back up. Um, speaking of holes in the sidewalks. Um, Scarecrows. No, I, I don't. I think the scarecrows have been maybe put to rest, but we do the flags. I know that the Boy Scouts have actually taken over BJ Walters and the Boy Scout troop in town has taken over um, the um, responsibility for the flags mm -hmm. um, that will be done. They were done on the 4th of July. Well, actually, they weren't done on the 4th of July because it was raining, but they will do them on um, Veterans Day. Jason and tells me the holes are there. Okay, okay. I didn't notice, I, on, no, I didn't notice them absolutely. on yeah, well, okay. they, yeah, because mm -hmm. I remember we said we would put those, when they okay. did the sidewalk, we would right. put the holes. Right, yeah. 
Okay. Um, so we have we're starting August fifteenth with an executive session. Correct. Uh, what for? What purpose? Uh, feedback. Because we haven't no. seen each other for a month. <laughs> <laughs> you have a report. Real estate it's supposed to be delivered to you regarding new personnel. Okay. Oh, okay. Personnel. Okay. Um, so we've got the um, the resolution 2016-39 for the Army Corps of Engineers grant, um, accepting transfer of the land known as the Center for Business and Education to the Village of Yellow Springs. Uh, resolution 2016-41, the annexation um, of basically the Glen um, into Yellow Springs. Is this the final resolution or will there be yes, more? Yes, no, this is it. This is it, okay. That's, so we'll have to get a new square footage estimate for the village <laughs> or square mileage estimate. Um, anything else, did we have anything yes. else? That, <coughs> oh, oh, the yeah. roundup. Yeah. And then funding of special events, you brought it back. Community development funding. Mm -hmm. Are we calling it community Are development funding or funding of special events? I think we changed it on this agenda to community development funding. Okay. Yep. Roundup, utility roundup, okay. Um, anything else that we added? And there may be things since we were going a month without a meeting we may very well have legislation unexpected legislation um, so September 19th that, that's a regular meeting so that's we'll be talking budget uh, general fund budget then um, October 3rd enterprise fund budget October 17th um, are the and are these all these are all regular meetings Melissa mm -hmm. okay unless there's a request for any of them to be special. Okay. Um, was there additional, um, were there additional items from the um, CBE information that needs to be included and in, needs to be added into those? Um, well, the RFP for the... Well, yes, that, that is in the timeline. The, um, mm -hmm. the RFP uh, for the uh, letting the contract would be in the September 6th meeting. Um, yeah, I did not put anything moving forward because you haven't passed mm -hmm. the resolution yet. Accepting that. Right. Okay. So just to let the RFP would be then and then the, to award the contract wouldn't be until October 3rd. Okay. And do we have that the piece of legislation about annexation on the... Oh, RFP? that's right. That's well... Coming back, right? I, I would guess that the ordinance that we're talking about, 2016-14, will tentatively put that on the next agenda about annex or about utility extensions. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.